this tutorial we'll see how to use auto levels to prep your shot for high speed or time lapse or for any other situation by identifying problem areas. We will see a few different scenarios and how to deal with each case. The first thing I do when I get any new time lapse footage that I've never seen before is run dflicker auto levels. This helps me to understand what's going on with the shot and visually navigate to trouble areas if need be. So let's get started with the first example. I can load a clip here in After Effects and the first thing we notice is this error message about missing frames. I don't know if it's missing one or three or where they are exactly. I can add deflick or auto levels to help figure out where the issues are. We can set the viewer resolution here to quarter since these are 4K files. It won't make much of a difference for global correction and it will save a lot of time. I can go ahead and start analyzing this footage by selecting Start Analysis. We will let that go through and analyze the sequence. But don't worry, I won't make you wait. Okay, back to business. Now, if I open the graph view, you can see the graph it generated. We can right mouse click to make sure we have the Show Animated Properties selected in the menu. We want to make sure Show Reference Graph is off though. We can zoom in on the graph a little and see this first spike. This looks like there might have been a shutter malfunction. It must be our missing frame. We can try our Filter Out Frames option to fix this. First we can try Use Only Even Number. Since that didn't do anything, we can try Use Only Odd Number. That works. If I look at the previous frame and the frame after, you can see that I have a dark frame though. First we can animate the Filter Out Frames option to Use All before the missing frame. Then we can set a keyframe to Use Only Odd Frame Number for the missing frame and then back to Use All after the missing frame. Then we need to zoom in on the bad frame and remove all the keyframes. Oops, that removed our keyframe for the Filter Out Frames as well. So I can reset that keyframe to Use Only Odd Frames and you can see that's working now. Now we've zoomed back out and we can look at the graph and see the next suspicious area. Looks like it was pretty windy out. We have a two frame issue this time. We will approach this one different. We could maybe use our mark segments option and also delete the two bad frames worth of keyframes, but on second thought, I'll go with a different method. I'll go over mark segments in the next example. I don't think cutting these two frames out will make a difference, so we'll use After Effects split layer option instead. We can go to the last good frame, which is here on frame 989, and go to Edit, Split Layer. If we go back to the normal timeline view, we can see that we have two layers now and that, and that the effects have split and copied over to the new layer. We can zoom in and drag the handle to exclude the two bad frames and then just offset the layer. This is how we deal with those two bad frames that we just identified using auto levels. So you can see how auto levels helped us to identify a missing frame and a gap to cut out and how we're able to deal with those issues and now our footage is ready for whatever we want to do with it. Here you can see the difference. Even though you don't see too much change in this example, keep the following things in mind. Since you already have done the analysis, except if you have hard transitions, this plugin can be left on as it takes no time to process at this point. It only reads stored parameter values and not images. Even a little bit of correction will always help the motion tracking of the other two plugins. Not all shots are like this example. If the changes are due to auto exposure as opposed to natural phenomena, it will have more of a visual impact. And it's generally safe to apply auto levels as a first pass with the default settings. Now we'll see another example and how to deal with another common issue. Let's see how the marking segments option can help us when we have flickering in one section of an edit and not another. We can start by analyzing our clip with auto levels to look for any discontinuity in the graph. This will let us know 
where to turn on and off deflickering by setting keyframes. Here is the first issue at frame 829. We can see the vertical line on the graph. We've added the time lapse plugin and we can leave the time window on 2. We'll use the method 3 course color transfer. Now we can use the mark segments option dissolve because there's a dissolve between the two scenes and we want to let deflicker know internally so it doesn't deflicker across that dissolve. We can set another keyframe and select cut A to turn deflicker back on. Now we can go to the next disruption on the graph. It's here around 2025. We can set keyframes again and mark segments. We can choose Dissolve again at the beginning. You can see what happens if we just leave it without turning Deflicker off here. There are some adjacent frames causing visual contamination. Now we can reset the keyframe. Okay, now we can set it to Cut B after the Dissolve. In this next case, it's where the credits are, so we probably don't want deflicker being used on that section. We can set keyframes to animate the max change percentage to zero during that section, since zero percent would mean that deflicker isn't allowed to have any effect. Now we can see the result. Just to recap, we've seen how deflicker plugins can help us when there are missing or bad frames and also when we're working on an edit with multiple cuts.